Maca's guides. <laughs> hey everyone, Maca here. Welcome to my Dead Space Remake Collectibles Guide. In this video, I'll be going chapter by chapter and basically showing you everything you might miss so that you can maximize and grab as many achievements or trophies in one playthrough. This includes grabbing as many physical logs as possible, grabbing the nine weapons, the 21 weapon upgrades, the six suit upgrades, the 13 schematics, as well as grabbing as many nodes as we can per playthrough. I'll also show you how to complete the three side missions and grab the chapter specific achievements or trophies you might miss. Now the first collectible type you can grab is right at the beginning of the game as soon as you gain control of your character, turn around and go through the left door to find your first log. There's one achievement or trophy for 75 logs and one achievement or trophy for 150. Although logs can be attained through things like doing tutorials and unlocking story elements automatically, some logs do need to be picked up. Those are the ones I'm gonna show in this video series. The second log can be grabbed really easily once you enter the first room with your crew. You can find it on a bench near the far side, so make sure you grab it. The first weapon we can unlock during the game is the plasma cutter. It's pretty much impossible to miss, but in an effort of thoroughness, I am gonna include it in this video series. You'll take an elevator ride up and pretty obviously notice it to your left before punching your way through a door and continuing on with the mission. The next physical log can be found after you grab the plasma cutter, go through the door, follow the hallway, and you'll notice it on a wall directly in front of you. If you're a Dead Space veteran, you may have noticed that some of these logs have slightly moved or even changed since the remake. Additionally, you can open up your inventory and look through the logs you already have. You'll probably have over 30 logs at this point in the game, just from all the tutorials that have shown up on your screen. You'll eventually reach a room where you now have to repair the tram and you can kind of go two different ways. I'm going to follow the mission marker and go and repair the damaged tram. On my way there, I will find a new weapon, which is the stasis module. This is required in order to allow you to beat the game. But next to this, there's also a very tricky log. After you pick it up, just stand in front of this door for about 20 seconds and you will get a tutorial on how to use stasis. This is a missable log. We've then followed our mission marker and made it to the tram repair room. And there's a couple of different things to grab in here. A lot of them are actually kind of tricky. But as soon as you walk in, turn to the right, you'll notice a kind of pinkish red light. And this is an audio log that you can pick up. This one is called stasis module request. Now there is also another log in this room called the auto loader. And this is another one that's kind of a tutorial where you have to do something in a specific way to grab it. So interact with the tram repair screen in the middle of the area and then try to interact with the left claw that is disengaged. This will engage this claw first, which is mandatory for the auto loader log. After this, you may get attacked by an enemy. So I've edited that out. And now what you want to do is you want to go to the other claw. And normally to do this, you would use stasis to engage this claw, but we have to fail this twice in order to get the auto loader log to come out. After the first time we use it, it won't work and it will spawn an enemy. But then after we take out that enemy, use it a second time and fail it again. After failing it, wait about five, 10 seconds and you will get an audio call, which is a missable log. Last but not least, in this room, before solving the puzzle, you can grab a node. Nodes are basically used to upgrade things like your weapon paths and your suit path, and you'll use these at benches to basically get stronger and better. Now, unfortunately, there's only about 60 nodes per playthrough and you'll need over 180 to max out your suit, which is required for an achievement or trophy. This means you'll need to play through the game at least twice and you'll need to buy nodes via the in-game shop to max things out. After repairing the tram, you can now go in that secondary path, which is towards the cargo and baggage hold from the main area where the data board is needed. At the end of the hall, you should notice a circuit where you can change the path of the electricity and this will open up a door behind you back towards where we came from. You can head into this storage facility, which is a small room. Inside, you may find a couple of things to loot, but most importantly, there is a node on the wall. Again, these will help you upgrade your suit and weapons. 
You'll then find your way inside of the cargo hold and you'll need to find the data board. The first step to this is to go upstairs and reroute the electricity. Next to the kind of circuit breaker on the wall, if you look to the right, there's a chair on that chair, find a log. After rerouting the circuit breaker, you'll make your way back downstairs to find the data board inside of the maintenance bay office. Instead of grabbing the data board, first we can grab a log called poker invitation. And next to that log on the wall directly beside it, we can find our third node of the game. You'll then be tasked with returning to the ship that we came from at the beginning of the game. You'll take an elevator to get there if you follow the mission markers. And on your way there, you should find a small bay to your left hand side with a node on the wall inside. Last but not least, at the very end of the level, you'll be tasked with going to the medical deck. You'll take an elevator and you should notice a very obvious store in front of you. If you access this store and you have enough funds, which is 10,000, you'll be able to buy a suit upgrade. I'd highly recommend buying this suit upgrade as early as possible. If you don't have enough money, you can go into your inventory and sell some stuff. You can also move some stuff into storage if you so desire. But when able to, make sure you buy this suit upgrade to get to level two. This is chapter two, right at the very beginning of the chapter, we will unlock the Kinesis module, which is required for progression of the game. Just after earning your Kinesis module and moving some blocks aside to gain access to the hallway, you'll walk through the door. Directly in front of you, you'll find a security officer who will drop you your second weapon, known as the Pulse Rifle, so make sure you pick it up off the ground before moving on. It also has a pretty cool secondary fire, although it can really eat through ammo. There's also achievements and trophies for getting a certain amount of kills with each weapon, so you can start using this one to get that as well. You'll continue playing through the mission. You'll enter a room where you have a bit of a split path. We're going to go for the tank first, as that's where the in-game waypoint system will take you. And that's going to be the easiest way to do it. And if you follow that marker, you'll go through image diagnostics. In one of the first rooms you enter, you'll have to kind of clear the way using your kinesis. At the back of the room, you can interact with the circuit breaker on the wall in order to open up the offices instead of opening up the elevator. And if you backtrack a little bit to where we entered from, you will have opened up a new room. And inside of here, you can find a log called Patient Harris. I the tests on Patient Harris right? Additionally, not far from this collectible, we can also find Node 5. Feel free to loot the room as well, but you will be locked out of a couple of the crates until later if you want to backtrack. But if you go back towards the circuit breaker, you would have also opened up this office here, which is the diagnostics technician room, I guess. Inside of there on the far wall, you can find another node. You'll then take the elevator from the circuit breaker we were just at. There will be some enemies and you will have to use Kinesis to make a bridge for you to cross. If you follow the waypoint, it will take you down the hallway to your right. But there's a pretty obvious room directly in front of you known as the observation room. You'll want to go inside there and find the text log called calculated risks on one of the beds. Now, once you reach the end of this first split path, you'll end up grabbing the tank and then you'll be tasked with backtracking towards the central room. You'll have to take a slightly different route than the one we came from. And on your way down from the zero gravity area, you should be able to find the pulse round schematics directly in front of you. After returning to the main room, we'll go and find the other part we need, which is the shock pad. And you'll go into this kind of laboratory. There will be a bunch of enemies, which I've taken out, and then the lights will turn on. At the bottom of that elevator, if you go to the first room on your left, you will find a log called Nicole's Story. And this is going to be step one for a side mission called Scientific Methods. We're going to need that log in order to be able to not miss out on things later on. Additionally, in this room, you can find another log called Anonymized Transcript. And then if we head out into the main room, we can walk to the back and there are some washrooms here and some shower stalls. And inside of one of the shower stalls, we can find yet another log. This one is called They Defy Death Itself. So we'll pick that up. 
there's a couple more things to grab before we leave. But if we then go back into the kind of main uh, area of this laboratory, we can go into the center room. This is Dr. T. Kine. Uh, their office and inside of here you can find the log called marker discovery You can also use your kinesis to move over the bookshelf and find some credits in the back uh, And activate their computer if you want more backstory But then if we'd actually go towards where the marker is taking us to find the shock pad We will go to the main changing room here and inside we can find the stasis pack schematics then from there, if we follow along the main path towards the shock pad, you can just follow your mission marker there. Again, you can't really miss any of these main areas. It's the side rooms or the collectibles you might miss. You'll end up getting towards the biological genetic center, I believe. And inside of this room, after a small little sequence, you'll be able to find a log called vital personnel in the corner. From the previous log location, you'll take the elevator up. This will be al again along the main path towards the shock pad. There's a couple of side rooms you may want to loot for credits and ammo. But if you end up inside of the sanitary showers, the next room over is uh, limb simulation therapy. And here you can flip open the circuit breaker to find the shock pad, but you can also find a node in the corner of the room. After putting together the shock pad and the tank and blowing open the hole, you'll now be able to try to find the captain's body. As soon as you enter the clinic, you should be able to find the plasma cutter upgrade on the bench to your left. There is a nearby node, but we won't be able to pick it up now. We'll have to wait until later. However, if we do turn around and we head into this next room, which is the emergency room, there's a bunch of stuff to do. The first thing you want to do is to grab the text log on one of these patient beds for a quick log. Additionally, in this room is the next step towards the scientific methods side mission, which we'll need to do if we want to grab logs as well as unlock as many achievements and trophies as possible. Near the middle of the room, you may see a hologram. It depends on whether you got here and fast enough, but the hologram will play out for probably about 20 or 30 seconds. Let it play out, but after it is done, make sure you go up to the computer and interact with it. And here you should get an optional objective to show up on your screen, which says follow Nicole's hologram. At this point, you can go up to the circuit breaker, change the circuit to the left, look to your left and use your kinesis to open up this secret door. And inside of this secret door, you can find Nicole's study. It's a log as well as the next step we need in order to complete this side mission. If you also open up your inventory and go to your log, this one will get sorted under side missions. As you work your way towards the captain's body, you'll end up in the emergency room hallway B, and then there is a door, and just to the right of that door is a pretty obvious log called Rats in the Wall, so pick that up. Before we go through that wall, there's a couple more things to grab. At the end of the hallway to your right is Colony's Problems, so make sure you pick up that audio log as well. And just to the right of Colony's Problems, look to the wall and you will find node number seven. You can now continue forward and go to the morgue. Once you take the elevator down to the morgue, walk inside and you should be able to find the autopsy report along the right hand side wall. You can do this before or after you interact with the captain and the captain will also grant you security clearance level one, which will allow us access to new areas. So once we do get maximum security clearance one, you'll take an elevator and your objective will be changed. You'll be asked to go to the hangar bay. We're going to grab two nodes in this area before we leave and complete the mission. The first one is pretty obvious. If you take the elevator up right next to where the morgue was, you'll end up back in the emergency room and directly outside of the emergency room, you can find another node. Now, the next one has a little bit of backtracking, but from the previous node, which was next to the emergency room, we can make our way back into this kind of hub, hub room, go to imaging diagnostics wing, then we can go through the coolant pipes side room. Now, some enemies will spawn here, even if you run back and forth, I've taken them out, they just kind of keep respawning, you might be able to farm kills here if you have a lot of ammo. 
But if you run through here, this is where we found one of the schematics earlier on. This next door through here is the zero G therapy. We'll be able to fly up and we've been here. We were in this hallway earlier. However, we didn't have clearance to enter one of the side rooms. As you get into the next hallway, keep your eye out to the left. Go inside there. There will be like three lockers. There will be a panel on the side and there will be a node. So make sure you pick that up before you complete mission two. Now, as soon as you come back into the hangar bay, this will officially start chapter three. And if you look to the right, you'll be able to use your kinesis to grab a log called It's Mine. After grabbing that log, we can basically start the next side mission. And this one is for the you are not authorized side mission. Basically, there are seven rigs that we'll be able to find as we play. Once we get all seven, we can take them to a certain location and then complete the you are not authorized side mission for an achievement or trophy. From the previous log location, you'll be able to just kind of walk forward towards our main objective, which is through this kind of zero gravity area that has no air and to the right. But if we stick to the left hand side, basically on the opposite side of the bay, we'll be able to find an oxygen place to refuel if we need to, but we'll also be able to find a purple floating collectible. This is Volker's rig. Upon following the main objective path, you will eventually get out of the zero gravity, no oxygen area on your way to the engineering deck. You'll pass by a door which you can go into to find some extras, but at the end of the hall, you'll be able to find a text log called growth. You will then reach the kind of central control console room. This is an area you absolutely can't miss and kind of the central location for mission three. And to the right hand side, you'll be able to find Temple Log 01. Following the main mission path, we'll be asked to go and refuel the engines. And on our way there, we'll come through a door, go down the staircase, and in front of us will be a very obvious new weapon called the Ripper, which I actually really like. Before moving on from the Ripper, let's grab a couple of things. In the bathroom, right next to that collectible, walk through the door and find a log on the wall. Make sure you interact with it to retrieve it. After grabbing that, we're ready for step three of the Scientific Method side mission. As a reminder, in chapter two, we grabbed Nicole's log. Then we interacted with the hologram and found her secret room where we grabbed the Nicole's study side mission log. These two steps are required in order to do the next step, which is done by entering this calibration control room, I believe it's called. As you enter, there will be a hologram on the table. This kind of cutscene lasts about a minute and a half. You can stay in the room or leave, they'll both count. But once the log comes to an end, you'll complete the side mission objective and it'll let you know by showing you on screen. The next thing we can grab is after taking the little car across the gap when we're trying to refuel the engines. And after you cross the gap, you'll be able to walk forward, watch out for some enemies, and you'll be able to find this somewhat obvious log not far from the door that's locked. As you try to refuel the engines, you'll find that the power is out and you'll grab a key card as a main mission item, which you can't miss. Take that key card to this kind of maintenance room and inside you can find node number 10. You'll have to come here as there is a circuit breaker required to solve the puzzle. As you progress with the mission, you'll be asked to go to the centrifuge and on the way there, you'll have to go through the decontamination room. Before going through that room and into that door, hook around the hallway and follow it to the end to find a log called Chaos. There's also a couple of knickknacks you can grab here. After going into the decontamination room and surviving a little bit of an onslaught, you'll have to exit the room towards the centrifuge and directly in front of you, you should be able to find an obvious schematic. From the schematic location, just go through the next hallway and your main objective marker will tell you to turn right. Instead, we're obviously going to turn left and at the end of the hallway, we can find our 11th node that we've picked up. Although you may also be spending some of your credits on additional nodes so that you can level things more. 
On your way to activating the centrifuge, you'll come through this kind of series of turns going through the hallway here. And you should notice a pretty obvious log chilling on the ground near an opening. There's also some credits inside. You'll then come to what is quite literally the loudest room in the game. For some reason, I think it might be broken, but on your way to the engine room, you should be able to easily find a flamethrower, which is your next weapon unlock. Another one that's pretty hard to miss. After grabbing the flamethrower and squeezing through the hole, you'll come into this room that has three stories in kind of a vertical column. Go to the left hand side and you'll find this side room next to an elevator. Go inside of this side room and there are two things to grab. Primarily grab the log on the kind of uh, chair to the left as you enter. And additionally on the far end of the room, you can also grab a node. Make sure you grab both of these. We're still in that kind of column of the three stories right after we grab the flamethrower. On the middle floor as you're working your way down, on the opposite side of the elevator we took, we can find Ripper Blade Schematic. Kind of last but not least, we've made our way into the engine room, which is one of the final areas in this mission. There are two things to quickly grab while you're here. Underneath the kind of staircases here, you'll be able to find a node that's actually really well hidden. This one I actually didn't find on my first playthrough of this mission. Additionally, we'll work our way up. You can grab this one at the end of the area or just get it out of the way. But if you work your way to the console that we have to activate, on the chair next to it, we can find flamethrower fuel as a schematic. Last but not least, during chapter three, but before chapter four, if you do visit a store, you will have four new upgrades that you can buy, on average costing about 11,000 credits. You don't need to buy all of them in chapter three, but you do definitely want to buy the heat accumulator, kinetic autoloader, ricochet tracer, and jellified hydrazine during your playthrough. This is something you'll want to save for and slowly buy them as they become available to you in order to be able to unlock as many achievements and trophies as possible while you beat the game. This is chapter four, and as soon as you get into the main atrium and it kind of explodes, there should be a log very close by to where it exploded to the right. Next up, we will reach the captain's nest as a necessary part of the main storyline. And inside of this room, there are two logs. So make sure you grab both of them before continuing on with the dialogue. Now, while we're in this room, I am going to show you the you are not authorized side mission location. So earlier on in chapter two, I grabbed a rig and this is where you're going to take the rigs. There are seven rigs, but if you activate this little terminal inside of the captain's nest, it'll give you seven individual side missions, one for each rig. Once you bring all of them back, we'll grab that achievement and side mission completion. Once you leave the captain's nest and go towards the security room, you will be attacked by the first brute in the game. Make sure you don't kill it too quickly. If you just run around for about 15 to 20 seconds, this should start a log, assuming you don't kill it. If you're too quick, it won't pop. But once you do get that log, feel free to take care of the brute. The best way to do that is to use stasis to get behind it and then shoot it in the back. And after you kill a brute, in this case, it will drop a node, which will count as node number 14. Upon taking care of the brute, you now have access to the security room where you can activate the elevators. And in the room just past that, you'll be able to find a bench as well as a video log on the ground. You'll then take the elevator and assuming you go to floor two where the mining administration room is, you'll reach a zero gravity area. And as you're walking through, there will be this side room where if you go inside, you'll be able to find another node. This side room is called just storage room and it's on the way to the mining administration. You kind of can't miss it. 
You're then going to continue following your main waypoint towards the mining administration room. As you come from one hallway to another, your main mission marker will take you forward and to the left. But if you look to the right, you'll find the records office, which does require security clearance level two, which we got earlier on in the mission. Inside of this room, you can find your next weapon, the contact beam. You'll then actually reach the mining administration room itself at the very back is where our main objective is to basically flip a switch. But from where we entered the room, if you look directly to your left, you'll find the main fuses room and then you'll use a melee in order to break the main fuse. I don't remember exactly, but this office may have a security level two clearance, but destroying the fuses will allow us to go into the side room on the opposite side of this bay. And then we'll be able to use our clearance to get into this kind of third room. And inside of this room, there are two things we'll want to grab. First of all, on the desk, we can find the tracking infection log. And on the wall nearby, we can find no number 16. You'll then take the elevator to floor three, where you'll be in search of the electrical systems room. As you kind of leave the elevator and take your first turn. If you keep an eye out on the right hand side, you'll find a break room. There's a log that's automatically unlocked once you come in here called Believers. And there's also a log called Unitology Article, which is nearby. So make sure both of them trigger for you before you leave the break room. From this room, we can also grab an upgrade, which I believe is for the pulse rifle. So if you leave the break room, you'll find that there is an office kind of in the middle that's a little bit locked. But if you maneuver to the back of it, you'll find a smashed window. Use your kinesis to move the boxes that are blocking the fuse and shoot the fuse in order to open the door. You can now go around, open the door itself, and you'll find the upgrade on a shelf in front of you. You may notice my inventory is full, but don't worry, I picked it up after recording. You'll then make it to the electrical systems room itself. You'll be going through the room and you'll eventually get attacked by another brute. Use your stasis and feel free to use your flamethrower or whatever weapon you desire. I was going for the flamethrower achievement, which is why I was using it. But after you take out this brute, you'll find yet another node being dropped. So make sure you pick that up. Last but not least, you'll take yet another elevator, this time towards the water purification center. And as soon as you exit the elevator, you'll be able to find a log on the ground to your left. After rerouting the power from the water purification area, you'll be granted access to the exterior and you'll be able to go through following the main mission waypoint. On your way through the hallway though, take a look to your right hand side for the EVA prep room and inside of here we can find a schematic for the level 3 suit. We'll then be asked to calibrate the three ADS cannons and after we leave from an elevator, we'll go through a series of hallways where a log will automatically play. But basically right in front of you, it's really hard to miss. After that elevator ride, you'll see a save point on the wall as well as the log called hold on. This is before you calibrate the cannons. Last but not least, we can also find White's rig, which is necessary for the side mission called You Are Not Authorized, where we're trying to find the seven rigs scattered throughout the ship. Now, as you're going through the ADS cannon, you'll have three of them that you need to calibrate. And after you calibrate the third one, you'll complete your mission objective and be asked to turn around and leave. Instead of leaving, continue forward even further from the door we came from. On the left hand side, you'll find White's rig. So make sure you pick that up before you leave and end the mission. It should also be noted that when you finish this chapter, you will be missing one log based on how the chapter is designed. Again, we don't need every single log, but if you do want every single log, come back to this level in New Game Plus and do your objectives in reverse order. Let's start with chapter five. Now, as soon as this chapter begins, feel free to visit any of the in-game stores. Here, you'll now be able to buy a suit upgrade for level three, which I highly recommend. You'll also be able to buy the Super Symmetry Tether weapon upgrade. 
If that's a weapon you want to level, feel free to spend your credits there. Like I've been saying, you'll need to buy all of these things, but there's no rush and in some cases it may be better to save your money for down the line. Now during this chapter we will be revisiting some areas we've already been but there will be new collectibles. Like for example if we go through image diagnostics and go to the observation room after taking the elevator we have already gotten a collectible here but now instead of the right hand side go inside and turn to the left to find Mercer's volunteer log. After the previous collectible, just follow the main mission marker, which is to take you to the source of the broadcast. It'll take you down this hallway, so just go through the door in front of you towards Zero G Therapy. And then after you open the door, you'll find a save point and another door towards Zero G Therapy. Go through that door, keep an eye out on the right hand side for a doctor's office. And if you head inside, you can find a schematic for the line rack as well as node number 18 on the wall. Make sure you loot everything else before you leave as well. You'll then eventually reach an elevator again through the main mission marker and you'll take that elevator down and there will be a node directly in front of you when you take a step off of it. This one's really hard to miss. Through the story, you'll eventually reach the chemical lab and then have to make your way back to the emergency room and following the main mission marker will take you to ER Hallway A. As soon as you enter, take a right hand turn and you'll find the log on one of the beds to your left. From the previous collectible still inside of ER Hallway A, behind us there is the emergency equipment storage room which needs level 2 clearance in order to get into. Go into this room to find the line gun as well as node number 20 for us on the wall inside of this same room. Grab them both before leaving. Following the main mission marker towards lifting the lockdown, you'll eventually make your way to ER Hallway B. This is a little bit further on in the mission. And before going into intensive care, take a right hand turn and find the log called Sterile Instruments on one of the beds here. At this point, you can head into the intensive care unit and inside of here on the far end on the back near one of the desks or on the desk, you'll find a log called Harris's Choice. From the last collectible, we are still moving towards our main objective marker, which will take us into Dr. C. Mercer's office. Once you go into here, you can find his log sitting on the table. Make sure you grab it before moving on. On screen, you'll see my achievement for 75 logs, but you'll probably be at 78 if you've been following along. Last but not least for chapter five, if we make our way to the upgrade station on the way to finding the liquid nitrogen, we'll be able to buy the ionized capacitor weapon upgrade if we so desire. If you have enough money and you wanna keep on top of these upgrades, you can purchase it now or save it for later. We start chapter six by finishing a battle within the cryogenics area and start by picking up the tissue sample in the middle of the room. This is our first step to the premeditated malpractice side mission. We're now gonna have to do a bunch of backtracking and we're gonna have to take this tissue sample to the main lab. So instead of continuing on with the mission, backtrack towards the security station. There are a couple of different ways to get back to the security station, which is the hub of this area but the easiest way is to reverse and go through the chemical lab. From the chemical lab, head towards imaging diagnostics, and from imaging diagnostics, head towards the security station.
Now from the security station, we want to make our way to the main lab, which is inside of the research wing. As we enter, it'll be to our right hand side next to the save point, but the door will be labeled research wing. Head into this door and then head down deeper, making sure that you don't get crushed by the door and eventually you will make it into the main lab. Once inside of the main lab, go to the other side and find the elevator to head down one floor to the bottom level of the main lab. Once on the bottom level, take the tissue sample and interact with the machine on the bench near the wall. And this will start about a minute long little cutscene dialogue. Just wait for this to completely finish, which will update your side mission with the next steps and we'll be on our way. Now we can actually complete the third step to the premeditated malpractice side mission now as well. Backtrack back towards the security station and then head through the door towards the clinic and the emergency room. This is the uh, hole in the wall that we exploded way back when a couple of chapters back. Once inside of the emergency room, go through ER hallway B. Then take a left hand turn and this is the quickest way to get to intensive care. Once inside of intensive care, you're going to want to head to the back of the room where you'll be able to interact with one of the pods. And this will start a little bit of a cutscene, which also lasts about a minute. Sit here and wait for it to conclude, which will update the steps for this side mission. And we can put it on the back burner for a little bit, but we have a bunch of steps out of the way for now. So now we're going to backtrack all the way back to cryogenics. So after about five or 10 minutes of backtracking, we've worked our way back towards cryogenics by going through imaging and then the chemical lab and then cryogenics. And our main mission here is to go to the tram station. And as soon as we exit cryogenics towards the tram station, we'll notice a node directly in front of us on the wall. A little bit later on, you'll reach a tram station and then you'll have to go to hydroponics, follow the mission marker and on your way there, when you reach this long hallway, about halfway through, there's a door to your left, which leads to a ramp. And this ramp leads to the kind of bottom floor of where the trams go. We've been here earlier on before. This is where we unlocked the stasis module. But now that we have better security clearance, let's go and grab node number 22 for us in this playthrough, which is through this door that does require security clearance level one. This is the tramway storage room. So grab that before you continue on to hydroponics. Then continue following your mission marker to the hydroponics tram station. And as soon as you enter in through the door, you should notice a pretty obvious audio log just to your right hand side on the bench. This is Cross's log 01. We'll make a little bit of progress into the mission and then we'll be tasked with injecting the Weezers. I believe there's eight of them. And the first thing we're gonna do is go through this door towards the West Tower following the mission waypoint. You'll have these streams of jets here that basically fling poison at you. You have to get across to continue the main mission, but there are three offices on the left hand side. Open up the first office to find a weapon upgrade called the Angled Launcher. On your way to inject the first Weezer, you'll come through the door known as the West Grow Chamber, which opens up into a large hall. You'll kind of do a lot of things here as a central area, but basically directly in front of you and on the wall, you can find Cross's Log 02. From here, if we look to the left, you may notice a doctor's office, I believe. So if we go inside of this room, which does require security clearance level two, directly in front of you on the ground, you'll find your last weapon of the game, the force gun, which is really fun, but not very useful in my opinion. And if you pick it up, you'll also unlock the full arsenal achievement slash trophy if you've been following along with this guide. From the location of the force gun, we are going to follow towards Weezer 1 by following the main marker waypoint of the mission. This will take us to a grow room. And for this one, you can miss it. All you have to do is shoot the Weezer instead of administering the enzyme. Do this to any eight of the Weezers to grab this log. 
We've then navigated a little bit further into the mission and taken an elevator towards Weezer number two. You'll come through this door, which is the horticulturist's office. Inside, you'll find Weezer number two, but to the right hand side on the desk, you will find a log called Corruption. At this point in the game, if you go towards Weezer 3, you'll have to open up this door and in the hallway in front of us, there is a store. Interacting with this store allows us to buy the upgrade called the Subsonic Oscillator. If you think you have enough credits to buy it easily, do so or save it for later. You'll then make your way towards the refrigeration tower, go through the door to enter inside, finding the node on the wall directly in front of you before going into the zero gravity section. On the way towards Weezer number five, we will enter into this large room with an elevator in the middle that we'll need to take down in order to continue. Now, once you're up here, there will be these tentacles that are kind of blocking the walkway as well as the elevator, and we're going to make sure to shoot all of them in order to reveal an area to the left. And in this area, we will find Holt's rig, which is necessary for the you are not authorized side mission where we're trying to find all seven of the rigs. This is the third one I've shown you in this series so far. After clearing the elevator, just follow the main mission marker path and go down the elevator. And once inside of this grow chamber, you will have to fight against a brute. As with previous brutes, take it out in order to uh, basically grab a node that it will drop once you defeat it. So defeat it and make sure you grab that node before moving on. We've then made a decent amount of progress and I'm standing right here in front of Weezer number six. You'll have to go here to do the main part of the mission, but after you grab it or before, once you're on this floor, before going downwards, follow the kind of catwalk to the other side to find Cross's log number three. Continuing on with the mission, you'll walk through a hallway that ends with you going to the air filtration tower. You'll get an automatic log as a part of the story here. And there's a zero gravity section we'll have to float through. Before going through there, just make sure you grab the node on the wall directly in front of you. This one's pretty hard to miss. You'll then be working your way through this zero gravity section and there will be these electrical traps you'll need to use your stasis to get through. As soon as you get through the first one, you'll find a small room that is just off to the side as you enter. And inside of this small room, you can find the force energy schematic. A little bit later on in the mission, you'll take an elevator just after completing these kind of fire tubes. And this is on the way to Weezer number seven. After taking the elevator, but before going and following the mission marker, go to this room, which you can only unlock from this side. And inside you'll find two things that are no noteworthy here. You can smash the fuse and find node number 26. And on the ground in between the two kind of consoles, you can find a log called technical manual. This is chapter seven, and as soon as you reach the mining deck, you'll be asked to activate the launch tubes. Before moving forward, make sure you look in this little nook on the left hand side. There's a couple of boxes that you can use your kinesis to move, and behind them you can find your next node. Make sure you grab it. On your way to launching the tubes, you'll have to block a couple of lasers using boxes and ignore the launch room for now. Instead, continue down the hallway around the corner and use a box to block the next set of lasers, finding a little bit of a secret room in the back. Inside of this room, there is a log called Ore Storage Report hidden behind a couple of boxes you'll need to move with your Kinesis. This is a really important collectible because it is the next step in the premeditated malpractice side mission. 
earlier on in the game, we did the first couple of steps and now we have to find the ore storage report. This will progress this side mission, which we are almost done. As we continue moving through the mission and still trying to activate the launch tubes, we'll reach the extraction area. There's a store here as well as an elevator to our left and even a save point. But most importantly for this video, there's also the miner's log, so make sure you grab that. We are still on our way to activating the launch tubes and this room in front of me is called mining control. As you enter it, you should find a log on the table directly in front of you. We've now switched objectives to finding the admin rig, and you'll have to come through this area. You'll exit through an elevator, you can interact with a hologram, and you'll have to come through here in order to proceed. But there's a couple of kind of hidden things we can do here on the way to the admin rig. Instead of continuing down the ramp, in the central area, there is a log attached to the wall, so make sure you grab it. Additionally, from this wall, we can actually enter the room that is right next to it, even though it's locked. Just go around to the right-hand side, look through the broken glass, and shoot the fuse. This will open up the door in front of you, and then if you go through it, you'll find two notable things in this room, as well as a bunch of loot. But once you go inside, you can find your next node, as well as a schematic on the ground for contact energy. So grab both of those. You'll then come to this room where you have to get rid of the anomalies that will allow you to turn on the gravity in this area. And then you'll be able to uh, enter the admin room where you'll find the rig that will grant you clearance level three. But right next to it, you can also find a log you'll want to pick up. We've then taken the central elevator towards deck D maintenance in order to find the SOS beacon. There will be a bunch of enemies here. I've taken them out. But if you go down and to the right instead of the left where they want you to go, you'll be able to find the secure storage room. And there's four storages in here. The only one we care about is storage number 02. So go to the circuit breaker and turn on the second storage room and then go inside. Once you're in here to the right is a log called Thank You Isaac, which is just a log that you want to have. But the more important one in this room is on the ground and to the left from where you enter. This one is called Nicole and Dr. Kine, and this is the next step for the scientific methods side mission. So it's really important you grab that one as it will update your side mission objectives. A little bit later on in the mission, you will have to defend Nicole during this section. And after you do, she will open up this room behind you, which is the equipment workshop. As soon as you enter, if you just go down the ramp, you'll notice the intermediate minor rig directly in front of you. This one's really hard to miss. After you grab the minor rig, it's recommended you grab the beacon itself, and then you can proceed on with the mission and you'll have to launch the beacon. After you grab it, you can go up this little elevator and out the door and just around the corner. If you hook on to the right, you can find no number 29 next to a enemy. Now from here, there's a little bit of a secret utility room, so we're going to go there. Uh, just next to the node we grabbed before, there is a circuit breaker. And if you activate that circuit breaker, it will allow you to go into zero gravity. And if you then turn around and take off, go down to the bottom floor and to the left. And if you kind of hug the left wall, you'll be able to find a utility room. You can also use the right trigger to orient yourself so that your feet face the ground if you find yourself kind of upside down. And you can rotate using the bumpers. But if you go into this utility room, you will be able to find two notable items. One is an upgrade for the flamethrower. And just next to the flamethrower upgrade on the wall, you can also find your next node. So grab both of those. Yeah. 
On your way, continuing the mission for launching the SOS beacon, you will come back to the extraction area where we have been before. Here there is a store which if you access now, you can get your next suit upgrade which we picked up earlier. This one is going to cost you 35,000 credits and if you have the credits, I would recommend you buy it and or save up for later. Now the chapter still has quite a bit to go, but there's only one more thing to grab in terms of collectibles. From the store, you're going to have to go and launch the SOS beacon by taking this elevator. We've already went up this elevator before, but the difference now is that we have security level 3 clearance. So at the top of the elevator, go around the corner and find that office that we couldn't access before, known as the storage room. Go inside of the storage room to find node number 31 on the left hand side wall. Watch out, you will get attacked by an enemy as you enter. We're now starting off with chapter eight. Near the very beginning, they're gonna want you to go to the bridge, but mining is actually connected to engineering. If you walk through the tram, you'll end up in engineering. And there's a couple of things we can backtrack for while we're here. Now that we have security level clearance three, we have access to a room that we didn't have access to before, and it's pretty close by. If you go through to engineering, end up in the control room, go through the circular door next to the save point. It is unlabeled, but it is going to refueling. You'll end up in the fan room, watch out for some enemies here. And then if you continue forward, I believe this is the refueling room. It may look familiar to you but just take a right hand turn and follow through the next door. And then through this door, you'll notice yet another door that says it leads to the engine room. In this hallway, you would have grabbed the flamethrower earlier on in the game. And if you bursted it open, the hallway is now clear. You'll end up in this three story vertical shaft. And to the right hand side, there is a level three security maintenance door with Russo's rig in the corner. This is four out of seven rigs now. And there's also a log called the chief engineer's log, which I believe goes towards the side missions. Now, if you backtrack a little bit from where we came from, you'll end up back in the control room, which you should be pretty familiar with. And if you go from here to the preparation room, you'll be able to follow through a hallway that leads to the machine room. Down these steps, we would have found a weapon at the bottom of them earlier on in the game. There's a bathroom here. But if we go through kind of the main mission path, which is the refueling control room, you can then go down the steps and to the right up the ramp and find another security door. This is the platform storage room, which requires a security clearance level two. Inside, you can find the oxygen tank as well as your next node. So make sure you pick up both of them before moving on. So after that little bit of backtracking, continue on the main mission uh, waypoints for chapter eight and you'll end up back in the atrium where we were earlier on in the game. But now you'll be able to complete the next step as a part of the premeditated malpractice side missions by interacting with this panel on the right hand side. This will start a little bit of a hologram cutscene. Just wait for it to complete and make sure it does update your objective on screen or else you missed one of the previous steps. If you continue following the main path on your way to fix the comms array, just after this corner here, there is a door and on both sides of the door, there is this enemy that's stuck in the wall with tentacle arms and I believe they are called a guardian. This is a great opportunity to grab the backbreaker achievement, which is for getting 10 kills using stomp attacks, as these enemies will launch an infinite amount of smaller enemies that you can kill in one stomp. You'll need 10 of them to unlock the achievement or trophy, and these are one of the only enemy types that count towards this. Just one or two rooms later on your way to fix the comms array, you'll end up in the kind of comms array control center. And if you walk to the red console directly in front of you as you enter the room, you'll have a log that is missable show up on screen telling you it needs to be fixed. 
Additionally, in this room, there is a log called Mayday, as well as our fifth rig for the You Are Not Authorized side mission. It's in this office that is a small door to the left from where we entered. So you can pick up the log on the first desk and the rig on the second desk. Make sure you grab these before moving on with our main objective. Now, normally I wouldn't do this, but a lot of people are getting stuck. The comms array puzzle solution is now shown on screen if you do get stuck. Then a little bit later on, we're going to have to deploy the antenna. You'll make your way through this hallway where we'll have to use Kinesis to move some of the boxes. You'll make your way through a door that says maintenance gondola. And through that door to your left, you can find a node. Then you'll actually take the gondola itself, ride across and on the bench directly in front of you as you exit is a pretty obvious log, the comms relay crew. So make sure you grab it. From the previous location, there is a save point, a bench, and a store just up front, but continue through the door, watch out for the enemy, and instead of going left along the main mission path, go through the door directly in front of you to the maintenance locker room. Inside of the locker room, there is a store, a bunch of things to loot, and a weapon upgrade. Last but not least, on your way to deploy the antenna, you'll take an elevator ride down. As you exit the elevator, you'll notice a save point directly in front of you and a door to your right. Instead, go to the end of the hallway and look towards the left to find a node on the wall. Pick it up. This will be your last thing for this chapter. This is chapter nine, which takes place on the USM Valor ship. Everything on this chapter is missable as you won't return here. So make sure you don't miss anything and feel free to use a save point as a just in case. Near the beginning of the mission, there is a long hallway and at the very end, the mission marker wants you to turn, but go to the briefing room in front of you instead to find a log on the table. From that log, we can also find a log on the floor directly next to us. And then moving on, we can go through the airlock door and take a sharp right hand turn to look on the wall and find a node box there, making sure to pick it up before moving on towards our mission. After successfully ejecting the warhead, we can get a missable achievement slash trophy called Front Towards Enemy. Leave the room that we were in and then follow your objective and across the hall from the save point, you'll find the armory. Head inside of the armory and then go to the back of the room and you will find the shooting range. The shooting range is a bit of a mini game where you can get points based on the targets you shoot. But the first time you do this, you will be ambushed by a bunch of enemies. And all we need to do to get this achievement or trophy to unlock is survive the ambush, which basically lasts as long as it takes you to kill the predetermined amount of enemies. And once you do kill all of the enemies, it should unlock. It will also turn the lights back on. And I believe this also makes the shooting range broken permanently, so you can't actually set a high score. But it does open all of the lockers on the right side of the room. So if you go through them, you'll notice a bunch of things you can grab like ammo, but you'll also get a node out of these boxes. From the node in the locker at the shooting range, we can move towards our main mission marker. So go back to the armory, take a right hand turn, and then you'll go into the infirmary and there will be a laser in this room. And once you do enter, there may be an enemy that tries to attack you, but they'll likely get chewed up by the laser. On the desk to your left as you enter is a schematic. Also, the game will count this as your last schematic if you've been following along, unlocking the merchant achievement slash trophy. You'll then continue following the mission marker and you'll have to salvage the singularity core. To do that, you will have to go through the cargo bay. There'll be a bunch of enemies here, but the fight will culminate with a brute. As with all of the brutes before, take it out by using stasis and attacking it from behind. Once it goes down, make sure you take an extra shot into it in order to grab the node that falls out. Last but not least, you'll end up in the engine room and you'll have to use some crates to get across a fire puzzle. Feel free to save here so you don't take any damage like me. There's a couple of different ways to get this collectible. I'm going to maybe do it what some people would say is the hard way, but you can just follow the objective and turn off all of the fire or you can navigate to the other side of the room and pull the cube forward. 
With both of these cubes and Kinesis, you can now block the two fire streams at the end of the first hall. You'll actually have to carry one through to get through the fire stream, or you can just turn off the fire up to you. But on the other side of the second fire stream, there's a bunch of different things you can grab. But one of those things is your last node and you can now complete the mission. This is chapter 10 and we're going to do a lot of backtracking as we finally have maximum clearance to basically open every single door. And the last two missions of the game are pretty linear and don't take us to any of the places we've already been. So we're going to have to revisit a bunch of places and grab a bunch of things before we move on if we want to have that 100%. So we'll be asked to go to the crew deck and from the main atrium, if you go to the tram tunnel, you'll come down this walkway and then underneath the staircase, you'll basically find Benson's rig. This will actually be your final rig as Dallas's rig also counted, which gave us maximum security level three. Now that we have all of the rigs, we are ready to complete the you are not authorized side mission. And this is the last step. Take all of the rigs that you now have and go back into the atrium. At the back of the atrium, you'll be able to take the elevator down into the nest. Inside of the nest, you can interact with the terminal. Interacting with the terminal will basically place all of the rigs and unlock maximum security override on your suit, allowing you to basically now enter every single door on the entire ship. If done correctly, your objective will be updated in the bottom right corner when you do interact with the console and your achievement or trophy will unlock. For some reason, mine just didn't show up on screen, but I did earn it. Next up, we're going to make our way back into the main atrium. And instead of going to the executive shuttle as our main objective here, we're going to actually go up the elevator into water purification. Now we're just gonna wait for the elevator to get to the top. Once the door opens, there will be a master override door just to your right hand side as you exit the elevator. There will be a locker in here that will allow you to grab the high yield grenades and on a wall nearby, you'll also find another node, but make sure you loot everything before you leave. So now we're basically gonna just follow the mission marker. This will take you to the crew deck door, which is on the actual tram station for the crew deck. And now we're gonna be using the tram to fast travel around a little bit and grab a couple of collectibles we've missed or weren't able to get earlier. So we're gonna start off by going all the way to the end of the line, which is known as mining slash engineering. And when you get there, go to the mining deck, which is on one side, the engineering deck is on the other side and then go through the mining operations door. There will be some enemies in a lot of these areas. I've taken them out for the video, but if you arrange these pillars using your kinesis in a specific way, it'll give you access to this kind of secret door in the back known as tool storage, which you can see on the map. And if you go inside of here, there's a bunch of things to loot, but for this video, we're gonna be focusing on the upgrade located in the box in the corner. Now from mining, we're gonna go to engineering. So we're gonna backtrack our steps, but I'm gonna keep it in the video. Just head back towards where we went and you'll end up back at the tram station. Go through the tram to transfer from mining into engineering. Once in engineering, what we're gonna to wanna to do is go to the left and go to the engineering door. Following the hallway will allow you to get into the control room. Watch out for some new enemies that may have spawned as well. And once inside the control room, look to the right hand side and here you will be able to find the preparation room. We've been here actually twice already in this series, but if you then go down into the machine room, go down the staircase and head towards the bench in the back of the room, Next to that bench is a master override security uh, 
storage bin, and if you open that up, you'll find the carbon fiber blades for the Ripper. This time I won't show the backtracking to keep the video a little bit shorter, but head back to the tram at mining slash engineering and now go towards the mining door, but instead go through the actual kind of uh, train shelter here, and then you'll be able to go to the hydroponic central hub using this elevator. This is a little bit of a shortcut so that we can get to hydroponics and grab some things along the way without having to take the tram and then backtrack all over. As soon as you exit this elevator, look to your right hand side to find a crate, master override it and find the precision laser inside. Pretty close by, we can also find a node. Continue down the hallway towards hydroponics central hub. And then once you're here, go near the store. There is a door that says that it leads to the West Tower. That's where we're gonna be going for the next collectible anyways. But inside of the flow control room, you can also find a node. So watch out for the little sprayers as they do hurt you and you don't wanna take damage unnecessarily. And you wanna head into the third door on the left known as rare specimens. Inside of this door on the left hand side wall, you can find a node. From the rare specimens room, we're going to actually go a little bit deeper into the West Tower. Watch out for the sprayer, obviously, again, as you exit, but go kind of to the end of the hall where there is a little elevator, and then you'll want to take that up to go up a floor. This will just kind of take us deeper into hydroponics and the grow chambers. Head down the catwalk, and at the end of the catwalk, enter through the door, which is the West Grow Chamber. And inside of the West Grow Chamber, go to the central area where there's an elevator and take it to floor number two. Once you reach the top of the elevator, you're going to want to go to the door that does not have the circuit breaker on it. This door will be labeled the hydroponics control room, I believe. And then inside, look to your left and you'll find yet another door here known as the nutrition systems. And inside of nutrition systems, you'll be able to find a node on the wall to your right hand side. Now this node in and of itself isn't all that important. What's important here is the working discreetly log, which will also complete the premeditated malpractice side mission. So if you were to continue through the nutrition systems and then end up in the lab, once inside here, you can find an audio log on the table. And once this audio log stops playing, you will unlock the achievement slash trophy for completing this series of side missions for investigating hydroponics. Watch out for the enemy that does spawn as as they can take you out. And then you'll wanna head back to the tram by backtracking our steps or going to the hydroponic central hub, going through the sapling room to end up at the hydroponics tram tunnel. Either way, you'll end up taking the tram towards medical. Once at medical, go towards the security station. And once you reach the security station, head through the far door, which is the research wing that leads towards the main lab. Now there's a couple of different ways to get where we're going. I'm gonna take what I believe is the shortcut which is to go through this door using the stasis and then go down the hallway, down the ramp and into the main lab. Now you can either take the elevator all the way on the far end of the room or go through the limb prosthetic therapy stimulation lab directly in front of you where we found the shock pad. Take that, go through towards the sanitary showers, take the door towards the prosthetic center and then take the elevator down into this green room and just outside of the green room is a master override door. And once you get inside, you should be able to find the upgrade called Portable Heliotron. So make sure you grab that before we move on. Now from the last collectible, we're still inside of some of the research wings of the medical center. We're gonna basically be making our way through to like cryogenics and the chemical lab. It's kind of a long journey and it's a lot of windy turns, but if you're familiar with the area, it should be easy. 
If not, just pull up your map and uh, take a look at it. But basically, we're going to start by backtracking our steps towards the security station. Once you reach the security station again, take the door towards Diagnostics Imaging, which is the door to your left where we came from where we came from, and then you'll want to follow the hallways for a little bit. Ignore the coolant pipelines room and then continue down the hall. For some reason, it's extremely dark on my playthrough here. But if you take a left hand turn at the end of the hall, you'll end up at Imaging Diagnostics and then just head forward and don't take the elevator instead go through the next door this door will lead to the chemical cryogenics labs and then go through the hallway in towards the chemical lab and through the chemical lab take a right hand turn and then enter the hallway towards cryogenics in this hallway towards cryogenics you'll be able to find the lab storage room which is locked behind key access but if you head inside you will find an upgrade here We're finally done all the backtracking so you can take the tram towards your main objective on the crew deck. Once there, go through the zero G gym as a part of your main objective to finding the crew key. At the end of the hall, you can find the locker room and the showers instead of following the mission waypoint. And inside of here, you can find the schematics for the advanced engineering rig, which is the last suit upgrade if you want to buy it. From then on there, go through the next door, and in this room on one of the stools, you can find a log called the Z-Ball Rules. Now from here, we can actually play Z-Ball itself, and you wanna do this because there is an achievement or trophy specifically tied towards Z-Ball, which is for basically completing the game and finishing level six, which happens at 220 points. Basically, what you're going to be doing is using your kinesis to grab balls out of the air, throw them through the colored hoops in any order you want. But if one of the colors is glowing, that's going to give you 10 points instead of five. The first time you attempt this, there will be enemies. So basically, I would recommend just failing your first time on purpose. And then after that, on your second time, the enemies won't bother you. Basically, just grab the ball, the balls, put them through the hoops. If there's a glowing hoop, prioritize that. And I was able to finish with almost 15 seconds of extra time. You will unlock the achievement or trophy for doing the Z-Ball level six. And additionally, now when you go back into the room we came from, you can open up all six of the prizes, one of them being a node, which we definitely want. If you follow the main objective, you'll end up grabbing the crew deck key card. Then you'll have to return to the common area that we came from earlier. Now that we have the advanced engineering rig schematic, we can go to the store and apply it and upgrade our suit if we so desire. Feel free to spend the money if you have it. If you don't want to, you can save it for later or just not buy it ever but you will eventually need it if you do want every single achievement or trophy. The next parts of the mission rely on destroying tendrils in the standard quarters, deluxe quarters, and executive quarters. And as soon as you go towards the standard quarters, take a left-hand turn instead of following the path to the right to find a node. Then eventually you will have to destroy the tendril in the standard quarters. So go inside, there will be a bunch of poison and there will be a tendril, which is one of those kind of like arms with the little bubbles on it. You'll have to shoot this as a part of the main objective. But if you go inside and take a right hand turn, look inside of the bunks, you'll find a log called thank you doctor. Additionally, in this room, before or after you destroy the tendril, you'll also be able to find a node in a room you have to go to. At the end of the hall inside of standard quarters is the storage room. You'll have to go here in order to grab the battery, but once you're here, you'll also find a node on the wall, which took me a couple of seconds to find. We've now continued the main mission and we've made it into the deluxe quarters where there will also be a tendril to destroy on the roof pretty much right in front of us here. I'm gonna ignore that for a bit 
and instead I'm gonna go through the second door here which is the consultants office I'm gonna show you exactly where on the map I am as it can get a little confusing in this area but if you go to the guest consultants office there's a couple of things in here once you do come in here it'll basically start a little cutscene I think it lasts about two minutes the monitors in front of you will turn on and then off and this is all assuming that you are up to date with the scientific methods side mission. This is the last step of that journey. Come into this room, wait until all of the cutscenes are over and the door at the back of the room will unlock. There are two things to grab in here. One of them is just an upgrade for the force gun, but there's also a hologram that you can interact with on this computer that will start another little cutscene. This one lasting about another two minutes. And then at the end of it, you should complete the scientific method side mission, unlocking the achievement or trophy. Congratulations for following that all the way through. Now, while you're here, you can also grab the high pressure nozzle upgrade, which is available. You can destroy the tendril and take care of the enemies or do it before or after. It doesn't really matter what order you do it in, but make sure you do it before you leave the deluxe quarters. Go into the corner here where you can find the deluxe quiet bunks. And inside of this room, you'll be able to find a battery. You can grab this battery and then place it into the circuit breaker in the corner of the hallway. I believe all of this is optional as you can, I think, beat this area without this battery. But put this battery into the wall, watch out for the enemy that spawns, and once you take care of them, go to the circuit breaker and open up the first circuit, which is the doors circuit. Now you can back up from the circuit breaker and head through the closest door to your left that says to central nexus, and then take the first door on your right, which is the deluxe quarters. And then in here, there's a room that we weren't able to access before, which does have a maximum security crate, which has an upgrade inside. We've then made our way back to the kind of central area, and now we are trying to destroy our third tendril, which is available in the executive suite. And there's a bunch of logs you can grab here. Realistically, you will unlock your 150th log during this section at some point. As soon as you enter the first door, there is a log on your left hand side on the bench, so make sure you grab it. Continue following the hallway to the executive quarters, go around the corner and through the next door, and in the middle of the room you'll find another log, the Planetary Mining Investor's Guide. From this point on, it is up to you if you want to keep grabbing the logs, if you do already have the Legend Teller Achievement slash Trophy. Like I said at the beginning of the guide, you don't need every single log, you only need 150, so there are some extras, I will show them though. While you're here, go to Captain Matthias's office. Here you'll find uh, an interesting desk that may be of importance to you in your second playthrough. But you can also find a log in the corner. Then you'll be able to go back into the main room and go to the office next door and you'll find another log in that room called White's List. After going into the bathroom and grabbing the main mission objective, you'll now want to go to the chief steward's office, but before you leave the executive suites, go to the door here listed as Holt, and once you open it, go inside and loot it and take out the fuse, watch out for the enemy, but the fuse will open up the door to your left hand side, and this is the second officer's office. And here you'll be able to find a bunch of good loot as well as a node. So make sure you grab that. You'll then make it to the chief steward. After a little bit of a cutscene, they'll walk away and the door will open, granting you access inside. There's a pretty obvious log as soon as you enter, which you'll want to grab before continuing with the story. Last but not least for this chapter, once you interact with the marker, it will start a little bit of a cutscene, and then you'll have to go towards the shuttle bay via the left or the right door. I took the right door, but taking the left door is the better decision because on the left hand side wall, you can find a node that you'll want to grab before finishing off chapter 10 and moving on to the rest of the game. 
This is chapter 11 now, and it starts with us following the checkpoint until we get to the cargo bay. In here, we can grab a bunch of stuff, including a couple of achievements or trophies. So, first off, we're gonna go inside and head down the elevator. Once we get down to the bottom, watch out for the enemies, but there is a locker pretty much right behind you from where you come out, and you'll have to move some things aside with Kinesis in order to find the Pang treasure. Unlocking this treasure will unlock an achievement or trophy, and then you can take it to a store and sell it for a whopping 30,000 credits, which is a pretty nice reward. In this room, there are a couple more things to grab. Watch out for enemies, but turn around and start walking forward. To the right, watch out for the guardian enemy on the wall, but after you take them out, you can find a crate. Inside that crate is your last upgrade. This is a suspension module. We will unlock the built to order achievement slash trophy in just a minute. You have to actually go to a workbench, but there's a couple more collectibles to grab before we do that. Just beside this crate, just to the left of it, next to some of these tendrils, you can find a log called the last word. And then just a little bit further around the corner, you can find a node box on the wall. So make sure you grab that and loot a little bit before moving on. All right, now that we've done that, let's go and pop the built to order achievement slash trophy by working our way back towards the elevator. And at the top of the elevator, if you didn't already notice, there is a workbench at workbenches. Obviously, if you don't know by this point, you can spend your notes to upgrade your suit and your weapons. And if you've been following along with the video, you should have all of the weapon upgrades. So in order to pop the achievement or trophy, once you have all of the upgrades, go to a bench, allow all the upgrades to install themselves, and then you'll need to enter into all of the weapons and suits that have an exclamation next to them so you can update their node chart or their upgrade chart. Once all of them are completely updated, you'll remove all of the exclamation points from the list and the achievement or trophy will unlock. A little bit of mission later, you'll end up inside of the hangar bay and you'll turn off the gravity and you'll have to meet the marker here in order to transport it. But right where the marker comes up is a bay that was never opened before earlier on in our playthrough. So now that it's open, we can go inside and find a node. So there's two bays, a close one and a far one. We have to go to the far one and the node is available on the wall to the left. Last but not least for this chapter, you'll continue following the main path and you'll have to go to the flight control center to meet Nicole. As you go through the first set of doors, there'll be some lockers and some windows and there will be a node to your right hand side. You'll end up coming back through this room in reverse though, but then the mission does end and there is a point of no return. So keep that in mind. This is chapter 12 and we just basically have a couple of nodes, a couple of logs and some pretty basic stuff to grab along the path. This is a longer mission, but a lot of it is just kind of story. Once you do exit the ship, you can go around the back corner to find a node. Eventually in this first area, you're going to have to go into the living quarters in order to find a battery and activate the bridges. And once you enter in front of you on the floor and slightly to your left, you'll find a log on the ground. Again, you already have all of the log related achievements or trophies, but it's a pretty good feeling to just have 100% anyways. Then to the left, go through the atrium door and in the corner, you can find another log on the ground. And just next to that log on the wall, you can also find another node. You'll then make your way into the supply depot and you'll be using the controls to move the marker through it. And at the back of the room, after you kind of use some of the controls, there are these two doors. Only one of them will work and it should open up. It is to the holding zone 2B. And if you go inside, you can find a node on the wall to the right hand side.
We then go to the next series of hallways and end up inside of the Transfer Junction. This is kind of a unique collectible as it is a Master Override crate. And if you go into it, you will find three nodes as a single pickup. This is the only instance in the entire game where this happens. But make sure you grab them before you move on. After going through a little bit of the story, you'll come back into the transfer junction and you will be attacked by a brute. As with all of the brutes in the game, just take it down to reveal the node within. Make sure you pick it up and loot it off the ground before moving on through the transfer junction. We then move on outside. Our goal here is to put the marker onto the pedestal and there will be three of these tendrils that will shoot. After shooting the third one, you can reveal the log underneath it, but watch out, you will get attacked as soon as you destroy it. So you might take a little bit of damage. Before we grab the last note of the game, I want to thank you for watching the series. Make sure you drop a like, share the video with a friend. If you want to go above and beyond to support the channel, super thanks are enabled on YouTube. But as you walk through the access tunnels and make your way to the back door, as you enter it, there will be a ton of things to loot. But on the right hand side wall, you will find a node. So make sure you grab it. Additionally, upon completion of the game, you will unlock the schematic for the final suit level. You'll get 50,000 credits and 10 additional nodes as well as many logs thank you for watching special thanks to everyone on patreon for supporting the show i'll see you soon peace